Well, um, if we are talking about the, the right mix of technologies and approaches in order to successfully bridge the digital divide, I would say that uh, there is no single technology that will do that. There is no single approach that will do that. We need really to have a combination of uh, several in order to be able to, to achieve this goal. Bridging the digital divide has been a goal that uh, was pursued uh, or has been uh, pursued for, for all countries uh, from uh, several decades, for several decades now. So it's obvious that it's not an easy task uh, to achieve. There are issues of uh, affordability, there are issues of um, uh, lack of uh, service um, availability, uh, there are issues of, uh, let's say, um, knowledge about the population. Uh, some, some people call them digital literacy. Uh, the population knowing uh, what is available and what uh, it can be used for. So we have to take all this into consideration in order to look for a solution uh, that will uh, make it a reality. So we, if we go to the traditional uh, ways of bridging the digital divide, which is to try to subsidize a, a regular operator in order for, for it to go to the rural areas or underserved areas. We know that this has limitations and we have managed in the past to do that uh, with a certain size of populations but not with uh, smaller populations or more scarce populations. So we need really uh, a combination of systems and approaches. And now technology is allowing us to, uh, to achieve this kind of coverage and the, 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 the provision of services uh, in these areas and hopefully uh, to a lower cost. So uh, the traditional satellite services are now reinforced by these new high throughput service um, satellites that uh, provide much more capacity and much more speed in order to provide the broadband connectivity uh, from the same satellite with uh, 10 or 15 times more capacity than in the past, so it should lower the cost of this service. We have also this new application of HAPS, which is a high altitude platform system that allow connectivity to rural areas at a lower cost uh, because the deployment of a HAP uh, device is uh, much uh, less than a satellite. And we have the non-GSO stationary, uh, non-geostationary satellite networks these mega constellations that are going to be deployed or are being deployed that will come uh, in service soon and that they also promise to provide this connectivity at a lower price. If we mix this with the uh, backbone uh, uh, connectivity that we have, have had traditionally, the mobile, uh, of course, services, the fixed services, then we have a variety of solutions that we could mix in the appropriate manner in order to get to this population. But this is just coverage. We have to also take care of the affordability. That means how we make sure that people could uh, f uh, pay for the service. And we should take care of the third aspect that I mentioned, which is mainly the most important one, which is the uh, usefulness of the service to the population, which implies that the population is aware of uh, the, the services, is, uh, finds it useful for them, so the content should be meaningful to them, to the specific uh, community that they are serving, and they have to be trained or educated in order to be able to use it. So this is why this endeavor is so complex, and that's why, uh, uh, let's say, humanity has been so uh, struggling so, much, so long in order to achieve it, and we are still uh, in our way to that. Well, 5G, one of the things that 5G brings as a, as a novelty is that we will have uh, new use cases, and uh, these are mainly, uh, let's say, verticals uh, of the socioeconomic uh, activity, that, as we call it. So the industry is one of them, and maybe the most promising one where we can have uh, the various sectors of the industry having a dedicated slice of the network for their own needs. So let's say an industry that is installed in a given region, uh, in a given country, could have, uh, let's say, their own spectrum for 5G deployment for their own internal uh, usage. 
for automation, for stock control, for uh, everything that they can automize and uh, robotize and, and use the, the 5G for that. Um, but also agriculture and these kind of applications that are more socially oriented, where you can have these uh, IoT applications, uh, meaning you put sensors uh, in the field and you can see if the water is enough or you need more water and you can rationalize the use of water. And they say that now we are watering, uh, or traditionally we've been watering, uh, wasting uh, more than 60% of the water that we use. The same thing with, with the fertilizers, the same thing with anything you need to make uh, things grow, uh, measured uh, in real time and then able to optimize uh, these uh, resources. Same thing for uh, disaster prevention and any other aspect that you can measure by, by these sensors and using the IoT. So this is the verticals of the industry. There are also some other uh, use cases, as you mentioned, which are more popular for the common population, which are the automated cars. That means the self-driving cars, which are also going to be using 5G because you need a mobile technology that will have zero latency and very trustworthy. So this is one, two of the promises of 5G as well. And uh, of course, there are um, many scientific uh, applications. Uh, one of the most interesting ones is this remote uh, surgery that you could practice using robots and commanded by some, a surgeon in a, in a hospital in a big city and uh, using this low latency and high reliability aspect of 5G in order to carry out the, this operation. So these are just examples, but uh, I'm sure that uh, um, the creativeness of uh, humankind will bring other applications also to, to this, uh, to this en environment. Well, the, the Spectrum Management Series uh, that uh, Forum Global is, uh, has been organizing has always been supported by the, the ITUR and uh, in particular by, by me as a director of the sector because I believe that um, those are conferences that manage to uh, not only to identify the key topics uh, and the most important uh, topics uh, on this area for, for each uh, region but also that manage to gather the key players, the relevant players uh, in a neutral manner. That means that all communities are represented, the mobile, the satellite, the broadcasting uh, industry, also the, the consulting companies that are relevant for the various uh, needs and the academia. So it's, it's a good mix uh, of uh, speakers and panelists. It's a good choice of topics and, and uh, always keeps this uh, neutral approach that gives a chance to everybody to express its opinion. So it's a good uh, opportunity for us to also um, uh, disseminate the information that we have and what we do and how we see things and help the regions prepare themselves uh, for the WRCs or for the deployment of the new services once the WRCs have taken their decisions and finding the right interlocutors to, to discuss this and to agree on, on common approaches.